كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار إن شاء الله we continue كتاب التوحيد شرح كتاب التوحيد explanation of كتاب التوحيد written by الشيخ محمد ابن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله سبحانه وتعالى one of the great scholars of this أمة one of the scholars of أهل السنة والجماعة one of the famous scholars of السلف and he he did uh, uh, a great job in the da'wah and he was uh, working hard to help and to save the Muslims from the shirk that was uh, widespread in the in the Muslim ummah maybe you can say it was pandemic like uh, uh, coronavirus like COVID-19 but no doubt yani shirk is more serious and more dangerous than COVID-19 طيب <sighs> In uh, this chapter, inshallah, chapter 23, page 91, page 91, he said, Rahimullah ta'ala, some people of this ummah, of this nation, will worship idols. Bab ma jaa anna ba'd hadhi al-ummah ya'budu al-awthan. Okay. It is important to know that why? Because, uh, and also this is very important for the Sheikh to put this chapter in this book. Because many Muslims don't accept the idea that we have shirk. Many Muslims have the idea, please don't speak about shirk. We are Muslims, we say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, we pray, we, we, we give zakat, we do hajj, we do udhiyya, we fast Ramadan, khalas. Why should you speak about hajj? Sorry, about shirk. We are Muslims. طيب. Many people say like that. So, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah ta'ala, in this chapter wants to tell us that it is very important to speak about shirk. Why? You will know the answer from the ayat and the hadith in this chapter. طيب. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْجِبْتِ وَالطَّاغُوتِ وَيَقُولُونَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا هَؤُلَاءِ أَهْدَى مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا سَبِيلًا Have you not seen those who were given a portion of the scripture? أُوتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ It means they don't have enough, they don't have the full knowledge. They have only small portion or, or portion. نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ Small portion. من الكتاب it means they don't know the whole scripture the whole rules and the legislations of the sharia يؤمنون بالجبت والطاغوت they believe in الجبت and الطاغوت طيب and we'll come to the meaning of الجبت والطاغوت ويقولون للذين كفروا طيب and say to the disbelievers that they are better guided as regards the way than the believers. It means the Muslims. طيب. So what is the meaning of this ayah? Uh, in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to tell us about the kuffar and the Jews and Christians, Ahlul Kitab, people of the scripture, people of the book. They, and mainly the Yahud, the Jews, subhanAllah, because they are worse than the Christians. They say to the kuffar, like Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, and the idol worshippers, you are better than Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions. SubhanAllah, the people who worship Allah, wal Uzza, wa Mana, and the other idols are better than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman who worship Allah alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَلَمْ تَرَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا نَصِيمِ الْكِتَابِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْجِبْتِ وَالطَّاغُوتِ Some scholars said here, الْجِبْت means السحر, the magic. والطاغوت, it means anyone who was worshipped and he is okay and he is pleased. 
he is accepting that people worship, are worshiping him. This person is Taqut. Yes, I know. Many times we mention the meaning of Taqut. مَا تَجَاوَزَ الْعَبْدُ بِهِ حَدَّهُ مِنْ مَتْبُوعٍ أَوْ مَعْبُودٍ أَوْ مُطَاعٍ As Ibn Qayyim, رحمه الله سبحانه وتعالى, mentioned what is the definition of Taqut. Okay? Taqut from the word Tughyan. Tughyan means to exceed the limits. Allah says about Nuh والسلام, and the punishment for his people in Lama Tagalma. What does it mean, Tagalma? The level of the sea went beyond the normal level. Subhanallah. Okay? So, Tagha, Taghut. So, this person, if he is a scholar, we should respect him, we should seek knowledge from him, we uh, seek uh, yani, uh, consultation from him. Okay? But we should not obey him if we know that he is opposing the Quran and Sunnah. If we do that, then and he is happy with that, then he is taghut. So we mentioned this before. So here they say Egypt means magic, as some scholars mentioned. Taghut means the one who is worshipped and he is happy and he is pleased with the, this concept that people are worshipping him. Like Fir'aun. Fir'aun is Taghut. Why? Because he is happy. He was forcing people to worship him. So he's Taghut. يؤمنون بالجبت والطاغوت. And they say, they say to the kuffar, the idol worshippers, ah, about them, you are more guided than the Muslims. طيب. Another ayah. Or the next ayah. قُلْ هَلْ أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِشَرٍ مِّنْ ذَلِكَ مَثُوبَةً عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَعَنَهُ اللَّهِ وَغَضِبَ عَلَيْهِ وَجَعَلَ مِنْهُمُ الْقِرَدَةَ وَالْخَنَازِيرِ وَعَبَدَ الطَّاغُوتِ Say, O Muhammad, وسلم, to the people of the scripture, Shall I inform you of something worse than that regarding the recompense from Allah? Those Jews who incurred the curse of Allah and His wrath, those of whom some he transformed into monkeys and swines, those who worshipped Taghut. So Allah in this ayah said, قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِشَرٍ مِنْ ذَلِكَ مَثُوبَةً عِنْدَ اللَّهِ So the, the main thing in this ayah and the previous ayah, Okay, يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْجِبْتِ وَالطَّاغُوتِ They believe in something in, in, in a God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is shirk. And also the same thing, the, the second ayah. وَعَبَدَ الطَّاغُوتِ They worship الطَّاغُوتِ So it means shirk. It means shirk. Okay. So Shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala, he has a very logical way, very nice way. He wants to explain tawheed step by step. He wants the people to understand the Tawheed. He wants to follow the logic from the Quran and Sunnah, not the logic from philosophy. Logic from the Quran and Sunnah. Because, no doubt, the Quran and Sunnah is totally logical. Nothing goes against the, Quran, uh, lo the logic. The third ayah. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَالَ الَّذِينَ غَلَبُوا عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِمْ لَنَتَّخِذَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ مَسْجِدًا Those who won their point said, most probably, the disbelievers, we verily shall build a, pla build, a, build a place of worship over them. This ayah, Surah Al-Kahf, about the people, the Muslims, the Muwahid, who went into the cave and they died for 300 years and nine years. Okay, so after 300 years or 309 years, yeah, some scholars say 300 in the uh, 309 years in the Arabic years. They went out to people. Okay, when people saw them, they came back, or one of them came back, then they died again. Of course, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is an ayah sign to show people the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after that, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
يعني يعني the people were discussing or arguing or fighting what should we do for those people who are in the cave they died what is the number exactly Allah alam and it is not important three uh, five seven Allah alam okay so how should we deal with them so قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم لنتخذن عليهم مسجدا we should put a masjid here Okay, and uh, يعني, uh, the scholars or some scholars said this was at the time of Christians. So, the the uh, okay, what does it mean? It means they were oppressors, the group who were oppressors who have the, the power and they were oppressing people. They said we should build a masjid here. Okay, and this is haram. We put the message as we mentioned in the previous chapters. Okay? So now we should agree that the shirk was there during the time of Christians. The shirk was at the time of the Yahud and Christians. Jews and Christians were mushrik. Okay? As we mentioned in the ayat. طيب. Next, it is a hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said لَتَتَّبِعُنَّ سَنَنَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ Surely you will follow the ways of those nations who were before you. Okay, what is the meaning of before you? In another hadith, okay, or in another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clarified that it is Yahud wa Nasara. When the companion asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh, so Allah, do you mean Jews and Christians? He said, yes. Who else? طيب. So now we have the full picture. That in the first three ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, or Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab called this ayat here, to tell us that there was shirk among the Yahud and Nasara. In the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ told us that we are going to follow the Jews and Christians. We follow them in what? In the haircut, the food, the dress, it is open, it is general. So we are going to follow them in everything, in the beliefs, in the things that we're practicing, and also in everything. So it means the Muslims, of course, not all of them, the Muslims will do shirk like the Yahud and Nasara. So this is the point. In this chapter, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala wants to tell us that some Muslims will do shirk like the Jews and Christians. Then what? We have to know what is the meaning of shirk. We have to know how can we protect ourselves from shirk. So this is the point. This is the point. Not only to, uh, it is knowledge just to know. No, we have to protect ourselves from shirk. How? We should learn what is the meaning of shirk. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you remember at the beginning, the, the, the fourth chapter uh, or the fifth, uh, we, we spoke about the ayah when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam said, وَجِنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ Oh Allah, keep me and my children away from idols. Because of the danger of shirk. So we should ask Allah. Allahumma jannibna shirk. Allahumma jannibni wa baniya shirk. Allahumma, also the dua. The Prophet Sallallahu told Abu Bakr to say this dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa na'alam. Wa astaghfiruka lima la a'alam. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you or in you from shirk. When I know and also when I don't know. Tayyib. So this is the point here. The point here is that the Jews, Christians did shirk, they fell in shirk. So we, the Prophet said, we will follow exactly the Jews and Christians, it means we will do shirk. Then we have to protect ourselves from shirk. We have to learn what is the meaning of shirk and to be away from shirk. طيب. The, the hadith, sorry, 
the hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that surely you will follow the ways of those nations who were before you in everything as one arrow resembles another that means just like them so much so that even if they entered a hole of a sand lizard dhab it is called in arabic dhab you would enter it they said oh rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam do you mean to say that we will follow the jews and christians he replied whom else the uh, meaning of course the jews and christians bukhari and muslim this narration exactly it is not in bukhari muslim طيب in the bukhari the, the narration is shibran bi shibr wa dira'an bi dira' the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the authentic hadith in bukhari said la tattabi'unna sanana man kana qablakum shibran bi shibr wa dira'an bi dira' okay the, the, the authentic narration surely you will follow the ways of those nations who were before you shibran shibr uh, it is from when you extend your fingers so it is from the thumb until the little finger okay it is about 20 cm 20 cm this is called shibr they used to know the length by, by shibr okay so the length of this wall for example 10 shibr hand span wadira'an bi dira' dira' means the the length of from the elbow until the tip of your middle finger okay so it is longer than the shibr so if the shibr about 20 centimeters okay vira is about uh, يعني 45 centimeters okay so the meaning of the hadith that we will follow the steps of the jews and christians exactly subhanallah of course not all of us some of us and we see this now subhanallah we see the men women the children we follow them whatever they do we do the same subhanallah and many times i speak about the uh, the singers or the act 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 uh, actress and uh, the, the football players yeah and wallahi this is strange we feel sorry when we see our children and this is our mistake okay at the beginning don't blame your children blame yourself we gave the chance for our children to see and to watch the kuffar when they play football or when they sing or in the movies of course the children will imitate them we give we gave them the chance to see them and we did not teach our children the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the biography of the companions so this is our mistake allah musta'an طيب then he mentioned hadith so the authentic narration shibran bi shibr wa dira'an bi dira' then also he mentioned a hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said allah the subhanahu wa ta'ala folded for me the earth allah folded for me the earth inna allah zawali al ard so much so that i saw its east and west it means the extremities طيب يا سبحان الله brother sisters read the hadith this carefully ان الله زوالي الارض واسم زوالي الارض so i can see the earth in front of me from east to west طيب how don't say how now we can use the ipad or the laptop or the mobile and i can see okay the uh, china usa brazil uh, europe subhanallah the whole earth in the front of you okay of course the prophet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the earth but how exactly allah alam but he did that subhanahu wa ta'ala for our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we should believe we should believe in that طيب The kingdom of my community will reach as far as the earth 
was folded for me. Subhanallah. So this is a glad tiding. Uh, this is in Sahih Muslim. This is a glad tiding for our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and for all of us. Okay, for all the Muslims. Believe that Islam will reach to the east and west. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in Mecca, and he couldn't do da'wah freely, so he migrated from Mecca to Medina. Allah told him, leave Mecca to Medina. So he started the Muslim community there. And then battle after battle, then Alhamdulillah Mecca became a Muslim. So at that time, Medina, Mecca, a yani small area, relatively. But the Prophet ﷺ told them, my religion was spread to the east and west. Subhanallah. وَأُعْطِيتُ الْكَنْزَيْنِ The two treasures, the red and the white, were bestowed on me. Okay. أُعْطِيتُ الْكَنْزَيْنِ الْأَحْمَرِ The red means gold. The white means silver. طيب. And uh, the scholars say, in the, the meaning of this hadith, that the, the red means gold, and this is the, the wealth of the Rome. Roman and the white which is silver it is the wealth of uh, the Persian Fars Al-Ahmar Al-Abiyad then the Prophet sallallahu said وَإِنِّي سَأَلْتْ I asked or I prayed to my Lord that he may not destroy my community by a prevailing famine Yani, subhanallah, this is a very important statement from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi All all of his statements are important. Wahi from Allah, revelation from Allah, and not give their control to an enemy who in annihilates them in mace, except from among themselves. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "My Lord said to me." O Muhammad, if I issue a decree, it is not withdrawn. I have promised your ummah that I will not destroy it by a prevailing famine. And I will not give their control to an enemy except from among themselves. Subhanallah. Who exterminates them in mass? even if they are stormed from all sides of the earth. Only a section of them will destroy another section and a section will take as prisoner another section. SubhanAllah. Yani, the Prophet وسلم, said that our enemies cannot kill all the Muslims, cannot remove the whole Muslim nation. Yes, the kuffar can kill one country, can control two or three countries or one side, or, but the whole Muslim ummah will not die. The kuffar cannot control the whole Muslim ummah. Tayyip, no doubt that there is a time will come, the Muslims will wake up and the power will come again to the Muslim ummah. If you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly, according to the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what makes us sorry or we feel sad when we read this hadith that the Muslim as, as he said حَتَّى يَكُونْ بَعْضُهُمْ يُهْلِكُ بَعْضًا وَيَسْبِ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا Okay and يعني, only a section of them will destroy another the Muslims fight each other subhanallah not everywhere but we can notice this no need for me to, to name countries. You know. Now, there is no Muslim Ummah. There are Muslim Ummah. Not only one, we are not only one nation, we are nations. We are countries. The, the Kuffar, okay, tried their best to divide the Muslim, the Muslim Ummah into countries. SubhanAllah. And this was not enough for them. Even inside the Muslim Ummah or the Muslim country, 
also they want to divide them okay you are from this side and you are from the other side you are subhanallah and also the same the same thing we are families this family has a has a fight with another family and the other family don't, don't take uh, don't marry from the other family and we are madhahib shafi'i maliki hanbali not aqeedah this is fiqh okay the shafi'i the shafi'i doesn't marry the hanbali the hanbali doesn't marry the Han, hanafi the Han, subhanallah or the hanbali doesn't be, pray behind subhanallah sheikh bin athami rahimahullah mentioned that he saw in masjid al-haram for for jama'ah you know sheikh bin athamin rahimahullah ta'ala born before 95 years yeah, it is not very far time he born for 13 47 yeah, and before uh, 94 years about 94 years he said i saw in the masjid al-haram for mihrab or for jama'ah okay and yani for example the han, han, uh, they start if they want to pray dhuhr the hanafi group prays when they finish the maliki uh, group comes to pray okay subhanallah for jama'ah for every salah for jama'ah so or how, how many jama'ah every day at least 20 jama'ah subhanallah okay what is the meaning that they don't pray together it means there was a, a strong fighting i don't pray behind you and you don't pray behind me astaghfirullah i am muslim and you also you are muslim we are not different in aqeedah we have the same aqeedah we believe in allah we don't okay but the problem no i am hanbali khalas and you are shafi'i that's it <laughs> even sometimes people don't give themselves the chance to discuss so it is here uh, or it is there i mean the infighting of course if you read something like that you should not submit and you should not give up we have to work hard to unite the muslim ummah uniting the muslim ummah is something very important but of course this unity should be in the correct way i don't mean we unite uh, yani, all the sects together okay yani, uh, this one from Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah and this one Maturidi and this one Mu'tazili and we unite together no this is not acceptable this is not acceptable we have to follow the correct Aqeedah the Aqeedah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Aqeedah of the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum we have to follow the faith the way of the faith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So, uh, as conclusion, uh, of course, this hadith needs more time for explanation, but in this chapter, uh, the point here is that the Jews and Christians did shirk, and the Prophet ﷺ told us that we are following them, the result that some of the Muslims will do shirk. Okay, what is the uh, the solution that we have to learn what is the meaning of shirk we have to learn what is the meaning of tawheed we have to learn how to avoid shirk and we teach ourselves and our community okay zakumullah khair brothers and sisters i stop here and if you have a question now Okay, no question? Alhamdulillah. Okay, 
One of the sisters said that where is the word aqida in the uh, Quran or Sunnah? It is not there. Uh, I know this problem. Uh, this problem because you know some da'iyah, deviant da'iyah claim that the Salafi people repeating the word aqidah, 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 and you cannot find the word aqidah in the Quran and Sunnah. Um, the issue is not the word itself. I mean, when, our, when the Salafi scholars talk about the aqidah, uh, our point is not we have to say the word aqidah. No. We need the concept. Khas. Okay, if you like, we explain the religion without using the word aqidah. Okay? But I am sure that this deviant da'ya will not follow the way of the Quran and Sunnah. But just they are talking and they want, they want people to hate the Salafi scholars. Okay? So يعني, there is no problem in using the word aqidah. Okay? It is not mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. We will not use it. Are you going to agree with what we are mentioning from the Quran and Sunnah? He will not agree. He will not agree. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. Is yoga allowed for women? Yoga. Men, men or women, the same thing. Men or women, the same thing. Uh, many scholars or some scholars mention about the yoga or yoga, whatever, and meditation and these things. Uh, the problem, the origin is not a Muslim. The, yeah, and they want the, the issue of relaxing. We want to relax, and this is good for our body. This is good for our mind and the brain. Okay, the problem people are. Uh, I mean, many Muslims, not all of them. Many Muslims are very far from the Quran and Sunnah. So that's why they are searching for something from the kuffar. If we study the Quran and Sunnah, we will find our peace, our happiness, our relaxation in the Quran and Sunnah. Okay, so. No need for yoga for us. Read the Quran, the Sunnah, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the way of Rasulullah sallallahu and you will be happy and you will be relaxed. And avoid these things. Man tasabbaha fahuwa minhum. Hadith 2 can relate here, right, Shaykh? Man tasabbaha. Man tasabbaha, Fazmina, please, sister Fazmina, what do you mean? Man tasabbaha. Do you mean man tashabbaha, fahuwa minhu? Okay. Allah yahafdhuk, ya Shaykh, wa yahafdhuk, ya Rabbi, yahafdhuk, jami'a al-Muslimin. Shaykh, you mentioned children. Tayyib. Shaykh, you mentioned children and football movies. It's, uh, is it? Better not to have TV at all in home. If you don't have TV at home, how can you watch my lectures? You should have a, you should have a TV at home to watch the lectures. I'm joking. Having the TV at home or the, يعني, uh, the other things. TV by itself is not haram. TV by itself is not haram. The issue is you as a father, you as a mother, you as a boss at home or at work, you have to make sure that there, there are benefits for the things. Yani for example, I have the TV. Okay, now, you have the TV for how many years? Let's say for two years. And I have three, four kids. Okay, so what do you realize? What do you notice? Do you notice that we are getting benefits from the TV and it is not harmful? Or most of the time, the children watching haram things or w watching something to waste their time depends. If you cannot control, maybe well, I can tell you, don't put the TV. But if you say, well, it is under control and they cannot see the TV without my, uh, yeah, without my permission and I should be with them and I choose for them what, what they should, see, then it's okay. The point is, where is the maslaha? What, where is the benefit? 
Okay, you have to balance. What is the Islamic ruling in those who have a regular cycle? Yani, as a general answer, if the cycle is irregular, so yani, when this month it is five days, next month, next month it is four days, the, the other month ten days, the other month one day. Okay, if the blood is clear that it is at the blood of menstrual period, then she has to stop praying and fasting during this blood. And when she becomes clean, خلاص, she has to to take shower, غسل, then. Uh, pray and fast if it is Ramadan. طيب. And also, uh, we, can, we can tell this or we tell this sister, go to the uh, doctor. Go to the doctor uh, because يعني, generally this is not normal. Why this you have? Why do you have a regular menstrual period? Maybe you have a hormone problem. So you need to check the sex hormone test, uh, the estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, I mean the sex hormones. Okay, maybe there is a problem the, uh, in the uterus, there is a problem in the uh, pituitary gland. I mean, seek for a treatment. Okay, you need to diagnose the situation, then you take treatment, inshallah. Is gym allowed in Islam? Yani, you know, uh, brothers and sisters, yani, Jim, it is not there in the Quran and Sunnah. Okay, so you should explain, then the scholars will give you the answer. So, for example, if I say Jim is allowed in Islam, okay, but if you notice the situation now, almost all the gyms have music. When you enter music, 24 hours, and people don't, even the music is running maybe in some places during the time of Salah. And when you go there, يعني, uh, maybe people smoking, or in some places it is mixed, men and women, and يعني, many problems. So uh, if the case is like this, this is definitely haram. But for example, if there is a gym for men, and during the time of salah, they close and they go to the masjid, or they have a musalla, and they pray together, there is no music, and uh, good people, they don't expose their aura, I mean their private part, okay? What is the problem with that? So it depends how it is there. Fazmina. Okay, you mean the hadith when Tashabba be come for home in him. The Prophet Sahih the hadith, if you imitate uh, anyone imitates people, so he is one of them. طيب. It means if the Jews are doing something, then I imitate the Jews and something they, they are specific, and then I am one of them. Okay, it means this is haram. Definitely, this is haram, not allowed. And it can reach to shirk, major shirk. Okay, it depends what you are imitating. Yani if, if it is the, the, the issue, wallah, I'm imitating them in their haircut. Okay, I, I will not say then you are not Muslim. But this is haram. But if you imitate them in worshipping the graves, okay, or something like this, then it will be major shirk. So the hadith means that imitating the kuffar is not allowed. Of course, there are details about that because I am sure that some people will say, okay, they have cars and we have cars. Is it haram to have the car? We are not talking about يعني, something not specific. The cars are found in the Muslim and the non-Muslim countries. Okay. يعني, uh, the, the, the issues need, uh, need to be studied to decide this is haram or not haram. The hadith about Muslims following Jews Christians applies for teen or dunya or both. As as I mentioned, as I mentioned, okay, we need to study. Okay, yani as I, as I said about the haircut. Haircut, this is something about dunya. Okay, but yani, if there is a way yani, uh, specific for the Jews, then I imitate them and it will be unique for them. And I'll tell you the haram. Haircut is something related to dunya. But now I am imitating the kuffar something unique for them so and i am imitating them then i will tell you no, don't do it don't be haram okay but again we need to study everyone so we ask the scholars if there is something new we ask the scholars all uh, we ask the scholars uh, the sheikh sheikh please uh, is it allowed to do this and this 
This is done by the Jews or the Christians or the Hindu, whatever. Parents need to be very strict on what children watch. It's also difficult when their friends talk about sports heroes, they can feel left out. Okay, uh, I will not say parents need to be st very strict. Parents need to be uh, serious about children. They should to they should spend enough time. The problem: the parents are busy. Okay, they think that I have children. My job is to provide food, dress, iPad. Uh, I teach them or I help them in doing the homework. Okay, I need to be. I need to spend enough time, and also I need to know how to deal with the children. I need to know the personality of children, of children, okay, the teenagers, the puberty. We need, we need, to, we need to learn, we need education. This is very important because, uh, yes, uh, yani, uh, strict, as uh, I think you mean, it should be clear for them, خلاص. 9 p.m. you should sleep, 6 a.m. You, you should wake up, or 5 a.m. for the fajr, of course, before the school. Okay, yes, this way I should be strict. Humanity. Can you remind briefly about fasting of Muharram? Okay, inshallah, fasting Muharram is uh, the 10th day will be Ashura, it is Sunnah to fast the 10th day. Inshallah, I will speak uh, later about this, inshallah, in the coming days, inshallah. Is it allowed to say that you have turned 10 years or 20 years on the birthday of others, but not wishing? Um, Yasmin, okay. Is Sir Yasmin, yani, uh, uh, tell me if I understand your question or not. About the birthday, people like to celebrate birthday. Maybe just by saying Happy New Year or uh, sorry, Happy Birthday. Okay, Mabruk, now you are 25. Uh, this concept should be deleted from the Muslim. Okay, it was not there at the time of Rasulullah. One, one thing. The other thing, okay. I know one, one of the brothers uh, two days back, maybe or three days back, he sent me that there is a sheikh was saying no problem to celebrate the birthday. It is not bid'ah ah and yani uh, habibi. What is the meaning of Eid? What is the meaning of the, what is the concept of Eid? Something repeated every year, every month, okay. Like Eid al-Adha, every year, 10th of, uh, of, of Dhul Hijjah. Eid al-Fitr, every year in Shawwal, the first day of Shawwal. Every Friday, every seven, yani every seven days. Friday is Eid for the Muslims. Right? So this is one thing. The other thing, the Prophet وسلم, told the companions when he saw them in Medina, celebrating two days, he said, what is this? He said, Wallahi, these two days we used to celebrate in the Jahil. He said, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced for you so it means as Muslims we should not celebrate except Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr if you add the birthday it means you added Eid so you are doing something for the day as simple as that and also why you are happy if you are getting older why you are happy when you are getting closer to death do you know what is the meaning that now I'm 42 or now I'm 43? Now I'm 60 or 57? It means I'm closer to death. Okay, so we have to remove this concept from our minds and also from the minds of our children. No, but the children are very sad because everyone is celebrating the birthday. Uh, it's, I will do, some people say, I will do the birthday only at home. Only at home. Me, my wife and the children. I put a cake and خلاص, that's it. Five minutes and that's it. طيب. Why? Why? Okay. We should not imitate people who are doing wrong. خلاص, if you like to celebrate, if, I mean, if you want to make your children happy, 
خلاص برينج ا كيك يعني فور اكزامبل يعني تيل يور سن اف يو ميمورايز 20 عربيك ووردز فور اكزامبل يو دونت نو عربيك سو تراي تو انكرج يور تشيلدرن تو ليرن عربيك سو يو تيل ذيم اف يو ميمورايز 20 ا نيو عربيك وورد اي ويل برينج ا كيك فور يو سو سيليبريت يعني نوت سيليبريتينج اوكي ات از لايك ميك هيم هابي ذيس از اوكي يو ار نوت دوينج ذيس افري ويك No, he will do this maybe once a year or once a month. خلاص. Sheikh, if I visit a normal restaurant or any other place like airports and the music is going on, what's the ruling? Because we can't ask them to stop nor we can't fight for it. Shuf, because we cannot ask. Who is this? Because we cannot ask. No, you can't ask. What is the problem? If you tell them, please stop the music. They will kill you? They will not kill you. Okay. In a nice way, tell them, please, can you stop the music? If they accept, alhamdulillah. If they don't accept, ma'asalama, I'll go to another restaurant. That's it. But you know, if you are in a place, wallah, you are in a non-Muslim country and you don't have a place and you, or you are a visitor and you want to eat food, tayyib, stay and they will be the sinners. Okay. Or, for example, if they don't stop, tell them, please reduce or tell them, oh, wallah, I like to 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 speak to the manager or after you finish tell them please give me the paper you know in the many restaurants there is a paper you write your opinion so tell them i want your paper i want to write my opinion so write in your opinion put your email your put your mobile number and tell them uh, please uh, no need for the music okay uh, and put the reason yani, uh, i am muslim or like this is not allowed in islam or no use for the music right Do something, please. Can we buy a flat in an apartment in Stolmans or Imi? Uh, Rimi? Rimi? I don't know what is Rimi. Sorry, sister Yasmin. I don't know what is Rimi. Today is my brother. birthday so I don't wish but I say today is the day where you were born before a few years like this can we ask no, no need no need please to uh, to mention this name uh, to, to mention this yani, no need to keep in mind that the birthday is something no need for that okay طيب زاك الله خير brothers sisters may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of you And also I like to thank the brothers and sisters who contribute in writing. Uh, if you remember maybe two weeks back, uh, I mentioned that if you uh, like to do something for da'wah, right, we like to do some yani, card, okay? Maybe one card about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu one card about the companions, one card about the uh, Quran, about the seerah. And in every card we write, for example, 10 points, 20 points, 25 points, more or less. Okay, we like to make them in a simple, simple language, uh, authentic information. Okay, then we can print them and we distribute them. Uh, sorry, we, we uh, write them in English. Then we can translate them to different languages, inshallah, and it will be beneficial for all people. Bismillah. Khalas. Easy, Mahmoud. Easy, monthly installment. Okay. It depends, it depends, yani. Wh- what is the process exactly? Is it a riba way or Islamic way? It depends. Allah yagawich. Yes, I haven't forgotten. <laughs> I have, yani, zaham Allah khair. Some brothers, sisters, now I have maybe, <laughs> I don't know, Allah, 10, 20, but now it is my, uh, my job to review them, inshallah. Barakallah fikum, brothers, sisters, and uh, see you, inshallah. Saturday, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.